Street Cred Sports. Street Cred Sports. Uh, I'm crossing over. I'm, crossing over. I'm Euro stepping. Hello, this is Keenan of Street Cred Sports Training, and welcome to another episode of Time to Ball. Okay, so a lot of times everybody's excited. You know, it's the, the 100 episode, you know, 1000 episode or whatever. Today is the greatest episode that ever was. It's episode 72. Why is that the greatest episode that ever was? Well, it's because your boy was born in 1972, which was the greatest year ever. Like, you know, nobody has a year that was greater than 72 because your boy was born in 72. That's the, I always tell people, that's the year the legend was born. <laughs> I actually believe that too. <laughs> so this is episode 72. I hope everybody's doing well. You know, we it's cooling down up here a little bit. Uh we got some rain, you know, kind of feeling feeling good. Just hope it stays cool cuz if it gets hot, not only is it hot, but we got that humidity. And you know, I'll be I'll be sweating like like I was running a a, a 100,000k in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> so let me get into things that interest me. Now, first, I want to talk about myself. Hey, if y'all listening, if you guys, you know, ladies and men, if y'all are out there playing sports, but not on a regular basis, you need to take care of yourself. You need to properly stretch. The, the areas that I tend to think are most vulnerable for, for older adults when they start like playing sports or they just start to get active. Uh, Achilles, like calf muscles, uh, hamstrings, you know, those kind of things. Uh, I'll give you a quick story. Back when I was, you know, trying to walk on at UTEP, we were in the, uh, we, we were playing open gym. And I went up, you know, I was, I was up there. Your boy was, felt like he was flying, right? Because I could jump back in the day. People, some people know it because they remember me from back in the day. But I could jump. So I get bumped in the air. And that's that's a co totally, completely different story, as I found out later on about the guy who bumped me in the air. But I landed on my tailbone, right? And I hit the, hit the ground, hit the, I hit the floor, and I bounced up. So you know that was hard. Man, I was paralyzed for, I don't know, two, four hours or whatever. The ambulance had to come get me, took me to the to the uh, hospital. I think it was Providence, the one right there about the UTEP. You know, I always used to joke like, hey, I got a free Sprite out of the whole thing. But it was a, it was labeled a severe tailbone uh, bruise. All right. So ever since then, as I got older, occasionally... I would have groin, uh, I would strain my groin, pull a groin, right? And I wouldn't even really know how I did it. I just, like, all of a sudden, I remember I was playing in a rec league once, you know, and I'm, like, I'm walking the ball up the court dribbling, and then I just say, ah, and I stop, and I'm, I'm like, dribbling, but I'm not moving, and everybody's looking at me like, what's wrong? I was like, man, I don't know. I can't move <laughs> my legs and my, my everything's on fire right there, so... Uh, I've had this where it comes up and again it doesn't like when you pull something or you you pop some or something you hear it right when I pop my calf I thought it was my Achilles but it was my calf I heard it when I had my ACL I heard it right so you know you you tend to know when you hear stuff but with this I never hear it and it's just like a day or two later where I have trouble walking well I was working with one of my my college kids and you know, you know, they were trying to, they were trying to be able to learn a newer move, or not really a newer move, but ways to uh, create space at the top, uh, you know, and pull up jump shots. So I was working on a little, uh, showing them a little move, and I kind of went a little bit into things that I don't normally work on because, you know, ninety nine percent of the kids, you know, they they won't, they don't know how to do it. They think they do it, but they don't. So I did the move and uh, afterwards, you know, pull up jump shot and everything. And I'm I'm feeling good because your boy been losing weight and everything, eating better and stuff. So, you know, I was feeling good about myself. 
And, and, and my college player had had trouble, had trouble, you know, getting it and, and getting it down. And uh, that was on a, that was on a Thursday morning. Friday, I come in, you know, do my training in the morning. Nothing. Go out, look at some stuff with the missus, you know, uh, go to a couple of stores to look at some stuff. Then that afternoon, going in that evening, I started like, oh, man, this kind of twitch. It hurts, right? Saturday morning, Friday night late into Saturday morning, I could barely walk. Like, it felt like I had no use of my legs because I, could, I couldn't move my legs out of the bed. If I was slaying in the bed, I couldn't move my legs. It was, it was bad. Now I've had this before, but I've never had it as bad as as bad as it was. It would take me, you know, a few minutes to to walk from the bedroom to the from my bedroom to to our bathroom or from the bedroom to the living room, you know, and I had to kind of do it slowly. Uh I had to sit in the car. It took me a while to be able to get my feet in. I had to literally pick my feet up. I couldn't I could only sleep in one position on my back. These were very sharp pains. And, you know, if I didn't know any better, I, I would have like, hey, you know what? Let's go, you know, go to the hospital. But I knew what it was. It was just it was the worst I've ever had it. You know, Sunday comes around, felt a little bit better. The The worst thing is I, I, I was like, OK, I'm going to go in. I have a couple of shooting machine workouts. I have a group workout. I can manage those without doing anything because I know, you know, I've been doing this for a while. The shooting machine, I was like, oh, well, I got two kids that, you know, they're, they're one, one's uh, looking to go to college, is waiting on a response. Other one is already committed, you know, and they're, they're two, two of the top shooters, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, all right, you know, they're not going to miss a lot of shots. And I'm shooting it on the doctor mach- dish machine, all right? So <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, the ball's going to catch it. Man, it was the worst shooting performance they ever had. Those balls were hitting the rim, going everywhere. Now, I have to t- I have to take my time like a little penguin and turn and then walk over really slow, get to the ball, bend down, pick up the ball, come back and do it, right? And I mean, they were missing ball after ball. Like ball going to the right, ball going to the left. So I'm trying to scramble and I'm going at like a slow pace. It was painful, you know, and then things get better. I felt really good yesterday, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm about 75%. You know, I can walk around. You know, ball comes my way. My reflex is a little bit good. I guess I must have been enjoying myself because I had a little setback last night, and this morning my body's like, hey, you a little bit too too uh, moving too, too much, homie. You acting like you, you know, like you back at 100%, but we're going to remind you, you got to take it slow. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure I take it slow. Why I'm saying this is we have to take care of each other. We have to make, you know, we have to take care of ourselves I, and each other. But we got to make sure we stretch, you know, and, and try not to do things that, you know, we shouldn't be doing. The weird thing is that what I did wasn't that difficult. And, you know, maybe I should I'll, I'll make a note and make sure that now I need to make sure that I stretch depending on the clients I have. And, you know, if there's a chance that I might they might need work on this or that, I need to stretch certain parts of my body more. When my calf and my lower Achilles kind of gets tight, I I don't do anything that's going to put a strain on it. And I stretch it a little bit more. Right. So I've understood my body. But that growing thing, I just it's hard to understand when it's tight and when it's not. But I guess it's always tight because I'm not playing. So if you're listening out there and you're playing you need to really take care of, you know, yourself and uh, make sure you're stretching. Don't be trying to, you know, uh, do no acrobatic dunks or reverse layups and stuff that you're not used to doing. This portion is sponsored by 915 Carpet Cleaning. They take care of all of your needs, whether it's residential or commercial, whether it's flooring or carpet. 915 Carpet Cleaning, they get the job done. Look up 915 Carpet Cleaning. The carpet cleaner, you know, before you need one. Okay, so let me get into the things that interest me. Oh, yeah. I got to start off with the Lakers. All right. You know, LeBron James Jr. or Bronny, as they call him. uh, He got signed 
Well, I'm sorry. Let me let me re, let me let me back up. He gets drafted uh, second round, late second round, and he gets drafted to the Lakers. Now, there was all this humbug about you know if he was he was going to the Lakers, if he was going to go to some other team that he wasn't going to sign, he was going to leave to Australia. Certain things, you know, his his agent who who was real powerful right now was basically telling. Only they only wanted two teams, right? Now look, if you're, you know, if you're in that position and you can throw your weight around, then I guess you know that's fine. My thing is, is at some point it's gonna come back. You know, at some point you might not be the most rich and powerful person, or at some point they they learn how to deal uh, with with agents who who kind of throw their weight around with their their people with their eight with their you know, players. So here's my take. The weirdest thing about Brian, LeBron, LeBron James, I'll just say Bronny. The weirdest thing is I've never really got a chance to see if he's good or how good he, he is. Now I know he's very athletic, you know, he finishes and stuff, but like in high school, I didn't see a lot. I mean, yeah, he, he highlight films and stuff, but I didn't see a lot. McDonald's all, all American. Now I'm tied into people who vote and you know people in the know and stuff. And there was a lot of chatter saying that he didn't deserve to be an an All American, and that was coming from a lot of people. Now I don't know because I hadn't seen enough of you know him and and, and other things to to make that you know or to say put my two cents in with it, right? So then he goes to USC, and it's like okay, well we'll see how good he is goes to USC and he has unfortunate, you know, uh, heart issue. And I'm so glad that, you know, he was able to come out of it. I figured, you know what, man, he's probably not going to play because I started thinking about Hank gathers, you know, and what he went through, you know, and then, uh, uh, the, the Mar Hamlin, uh, for football. And it's like, I want your quality, what quality of life, uh, I value that more than value seeing you on the court, but I get it. If if it's me and I feel like there's a chance, if there was a chance for me to play, I'm going to take it because that's, you know, that's what you dream of. That's what you want to do. Right. So he comes back and it's like, okay, I was worried, but I, I got a chance to see a few games and he was, he, he was okay. I guess. I mean, you know, he wasn't bad. And I figured it was going to take him some time because, you know, in the back of your mind, when you suffer something significant, you're always worried about anything that remotely, um, remotely close to what makes you think of what you were doing or or what what led to what happened. So, like, for me, uh, when I tore my ACL, you know, running and jumping towards the sideline to to maybe steal a ball landing and planning that took me a while to get over right so i can imagine you know anytime something happened that kind of puts you in that frame mind and frame of mind and takes you back it it's, could be traumatic so i figured you know it's going to take him some time i gave him to like the middle you know middle uh last part of the season and i saw some games and i was like ah you know, okay, so I'm looking at it saying, hey, okay, he's got all this out the way. He needed to just, you know, see that he could still play, no issues. You know, his second year, we'll be able to see more. But then he declares for the draft, and I'm thinking, uh, okay, well, he's just going to test the waters, right? You know, that's what a lot of players do. They get in, they get kind of evaluated, they see what they're rated and stuff, and then they go from there. Well, it's like, nah, he's not testing the waters. He's going, he's going to the draft, and I'm thinking, I don't think he has enough. Now, obviously, with the name, you know, your dad and stuff, there's a lot of tension, but I'm looking at it from a strictly game point, and I'm like, I don't think there's enough there for him to get drafted. So I'm anticipating, you know, he won't won't be drafted. He'll go undrafted. He'll, you know, maybe sign or, 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 you know, you get some one of those, like, two-way contracts, and his agent said, no, we're not doing two-way contracts. So I'm thinking, you know, he'll – afterwards, he'll – try to go to some of these teams and stuff like that, but they were steering them towards either Phoenix or the Lakers, right? So NBA 
for the for the longest time now has had their their draft all in one day. They decide to do the draft in two days, second round on the second day. They haven't done that before. Interesting because Ronnie was you know looked at being on the second round. Well, you know he gets selected, and was I surprised? No, because it's like you know I mean why not? Why not take him? You know, it's been a long, long, uh, you know, thing that dad would have loved to do. And I'm sure he would love to do would be to play uh, on the same team with with your child or with your dad. Right. So unprecedented. I don't think it's, it's, it's never been done before, as far as I know. So he gets taken second round. Right. So it's like, OK, yeah, you know, well, all of this hoopla, all of this stuff. You're still going to have to get on the court. We're still going to have to see if you could play. Well, he gets drafted last week. And he just signs a, a two-year deal. So I'm thinking, so you look at it and you say, well, what's wrong with that? Player sign. Yeah. Most uh, first-round players sign, you know, very quick. Uh but I, I was trying to look up. There was a lot of uh, second round players that are played that, you know, maybe made all star and stuff. What I was trying to find was second round players that had signed very fast. I couldn't find any player. Uh, the Joker, he signed, but he signed after playing in the summer league. Draymond Green, he signed, but he signed after playing in the in the summer league. I think most players sign, I could be totally off, but from what I saw, I think most players, first and second round, usually sign after the uh the the the, the summer league game, right? Summer leagues that they do. He signed a week after he was drafted. Summer league isn't until next week. Right. So he gets the two year deal. OK. All right. They sign him kind of like, yeah, you know, you probably figured it. Well, then the coach comes out and says, well, he's earned it. You know, he's earned it. He He's earned his contract, you know, and, and they're trying to put all of this makeup and stuff on it. It's for you to think that it's beautiful. And I'm thinking, OK, now, now excuse my friend. Now, now you're trying to. You bullshitting me. Now you're trying to, uh, you know, fucking tell me that it's, that it's raining and, and somebody's pissing on me. <laughs> I heard that once. It's always kind of been funny. But in any case, when did he, when did he show you that he earned it? He, he in, in the combine? In the NBA combine, draft combine, where they play against each other? In the workouts? Is that when he, when he earned it? He ain't played any games with whistles. When did he earn it, coach? Come on, man. Look, you could have, look, to me, you could have just not said anything. Because you're you doing it anyway. So if you're going to do it, own it, and, you know, you don't have to come out and justify it. But when you come out here and you spit spit shit like that to to people who are just like, so when did he earn it? How did he earn it? Did he earn it in his workout? Like, I want to know the player that earns their, their, their contract, especially second round, that earns a, 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 a contract doing a damn workout. Workouts are, are known to be good tests of work where players are physically and mentally. But you have to see the product because there are plenty of people that look great in practice and in workouts, but they don't know what they're doing in the game. And you got some that look bad in workouts, but they look great in the game, right? So it could go either way. So when you turn around and say he's earned it, and then you have a press conference. They had a press conference. Again, I was trying to look. It was kind of hard to see because, you know, I don't remember the last time. And again, it's OK. I can get it because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's LeBron's son. You know, he's up there. Is, is he the GOAT? Is he not? I, I get all of that. But now you have put the ultimate target on, on this kid to perform. He's got a the first time he plays, if he doesn't have a stellar 
uh, summer league, the question is going to be, well, when did he earn it? You know, you know that you know that they had all of this stuff in the works. I mean, I hate it because I hear people say it on the radio shows, and I'm like, man, you don't you don't know that. But how can you tell me that they didn't? That's what I'll say. Tell how how can you show me that they didn't have this in the works? Because if you look at players that were that were not drafted at all, they had better uh, uh, point production, rebound production, assist production that were in his in his uh, categories and stuff. There were kids that were averaging eighteen points, you know, eight assists or seven assists or whatever, and they didn't get drafted. Could shoot, could score, could do a lot of things that you haven't seen LeBron uh, Lebroni do, but they they didn't get drafted. So, I, f- I I'm happy for him, but to me, this is the ultimate. You know, yeah, my daddy got me got me going in here because now you're gonna have to prove it, man. You're gonna have to prove it. He might be on a roster for 15, 18 years. He might end up being a really solid player. He might be. He might end up being an all-star. The truth is, I don't know because I've never really seen what he can do. I've seen highlight films of on the break. I've seen some some great defensive blocks. But just him, you know, how good is his shooting? How good is his ball handling? How good is his creativity? Running plays, all of that. The stuff that you look at when you're evaluating players in, in games – I hadn't seen I hadn't seen enough. He's just he's on the floor. He's playing, but I don't, you know, he's just like a regular other player. Nobody stands out. So, um uh, that's 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 it's weird. It is weird. And I've had conversations with people. Even people, I got to reach out to one of my guys cuz he's a Lakers fan. He's just like, "Hey, so uh how you feeling, man? Brian takes a pay cut, and it's almost like, look, to me, it's like, oh, I'm going to take a pay cut so y'all can sign my son, and then I'm going to sign for less. And lo and behold, he takes a pay cut. They sign his son. He signs for a little less. You thought he was doing it, so he could. <laughs> he probably would. I mean, he was signing for less so he can get some players, but you would you who wouldn't think that yeah I, I want this little extra seven million that i'm gonna take less that's going to my son for two years right so get him done whatever's left get some other players i'll take less because you know he's he's a billionaire right but i'm not saying he doesn't have to he doesn't need his money because you know you that that's that's what the market is right so uh it's just interesting so let me move on to the next thing okay this green, this Green Bay, <laughs> this Golden State uh, debacle with with Clay Thompson Thomas leaving, Thompson leaving, it, it it was it was sad because you know you you kind of watch them as they ascended, and you just love the the you know the unique you know uh, catchy na- nickname Splash Brothers because they were just excellent you know shooters. You had two two of probably top five, top ten greatest shooters ever to play in the NBA. And they're both on the same team. So it was great to see see them play. Now, you know, Clay has – there were some issues. And you could see uh, some things going on this year, and you kind of wondered if he was going to stay. And, look, there was a lot behind it. There was a lot behind it. I wonder if some of the stuff they picked up on with Clay was just his frustration because it's like, oh, yeah, he was becoming, you know, a quiet cancer in the locker room. He was pouting and he was sulking and stuff. Yo, he was a great shooter. So if you're up and down and you have these games where you don't hit points and then you have, you know, a stretch where you you score some points, it can really be frustrating to your psyche because you know what you've done. You know you've hit 14 points 14 three-pointers in a game. You know you scored 65 points in a game after three quarters, taking only like 11 dribbles or something like that. You know that you are that guy, and you go through a rough a rough uh, patch. It's going to be frustrating. Now, when he hurt himself, coming off of ACL, then he, he tears his Achilles rehabbing his ACL, 
So he's out for a lot longer. He comes back and it's you he's not going to be the player he used to defensively simply because of the age and the type of injury. He he was going to be better, but I it looked like they were trying to make him be the old clay when it came to guarding the team's best player and he shouldn't have been that guy he should have been like an auxiliary because he's a high IQ should have been an auxiliary player maybe putting him on the second player that's not as um uh you know mobile like instead of putting him on Paul George because Paul George does a lot of handling right handle the ball you know with his with his handles creating shots maybe put him on Kawhi Kawhi gets to his spots. He's not as flashy with his ball handling. He can handle the ball, but he's not flashy, flashy with the counter moves and mixing up and stuff. But, you know, he's going to be able to stay in front of Kawhi more. So I'm just giving that as an example. But if you're putting him on a guy like, uh, you know, a Kyrie, who's really quick and stuff, where he used to guard Kyrie, even though Kyrie got his shots, but, you know, he, he, he played pretty good D on him. You you start to see that okay his 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 lateral movement his explosiveness and stuff it's not where it was he can still shoot but his timing's off so you need to give him some time and he was up and down but here's what he saw he saw Jordan Poole get extended and get all of this money he saw Wiggins get extended and get all this money he saw Draymond get extended and get some more money. And he's one of – so Dre you probably not tripping on as much because him, Dre, and Steph are the cornerstones of that four, um, four championships, right? But when you see guys that they get the bag and they get all this money, and I'm not saying they didn't deserve whatever they got, but now when it comes to yours and you're trying to get, you know, get your money, and it's like, no, nah, we're not looking at paying you. We're looking at, you know, letting you go. And they offer him something. And apparently the offer to him, I want to say, was the same amount for two years that he was going to get for the Mavericks for three years. So in actuality, he's getting the same amount, but he's getting more than two years. So he's technically getting less uh, per year at, at with Dallas. That lets you know that he was not feeling certain things, right? And it's sad because I know as organizations, you got to make decisions. You got to do this. You got to do that. But you've built like they just it's not like they haven't been good since 19. They just won in what was it 2022 or 2020? They won two years ago. So Celtics won this year. Uh, Denver won the previous year. The uh, the Golden State won, you know, the year before, right? And they technically have all the pieces. Now, they have issues with injuries and stuff. They, I felt like they haven't done enough with bringing those young players that they have if they wanted to keep the same formula that they had back when they was, was successful. Uh, also, you know, they kind of shifted a little with Steph and like certain things like you can't go as small as you want. Dre's not as young as he is. He's not he's not able to hold, you know, board with those guys. You can't have Dre and come uh, a loony on the floor at the same time because they don't they don't score. They don't look for their shots. So now it's basically three on five when the defense is playing. They, there's two guys they're not even really worried about, you know, and Dre has benefited from. Uh, having such a high IQ and, and, and occasionally taking, you know, layup. If Draymond Green took more shots in average 10 to 12 points, the defenses would have to change how they played him because he, he would score. But he's up and down with his scoring as well. He doesn't have confidence in his shooting. You can work on it. But here is something that I think I, I heard, and I think this is something that was – probably also behind Clay leaving. Dre punched one of his players on the team. Dre was ejected two times. Dre, a lot of people agree. He don't kind of want to, he don't talk about it as much, but a lot of other players say, hey, if Dre, and, and I don't, when you watch the tape, when Draymond gets ejected, the, the, him and LeBron, when they were up 3-1, him and LeBron get into it, they eject Draymond. 
they shouldn't have ejected Draymond. He shouldn't have been ejected, right? But you shouldn't have put yourself in that position, right? So they 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 lose their championship, okay? Now you get the the other one against um, Toronto, and it's like, hey, well, yeah, we it wasn't really his fault, but he didn't turn it on. They lost too much. They had Kevin get hurt and Clay get hurt, so you can give him a pass. But throughout Draymond history, uh, Draymond Green's history, he does the same thing. He's not gonna change. I think I've talked about it before. He's not gonna change. If that's what you are wanting, then that's what you are wanting. But when you re- reward that behavior and you know he's going to miss games, he's going to get ejected, he's going to do stuff this year, you can mark your calendar. I don't know how many times, but it's going to happen. Those things are going to continue to happen with him. You're basically, to me, you're basically saying, well, his value pretty much outweighs his, his issues right now. And with Clay. Your value does not weigh your issues. So we're going to pay, take a pass on you, which is shitty. Because who thinks that Clay is not going to... He was having his worst year, and I think he was 38 or 39% from the field. He was still averaging between 15 and 18 points. He was coming off the bench at some point. And I know that hurt his psyche. But he was still giving y'all points. So now do you have to have a talk with people and, and, and kind of f- try to figure it out and say, look, you know, we need to try to find a happy medium, man. You know, w- we're going to have to take your touches a, a little bit lower. Uh, maybe you, if you come, you can come off the bench or you can start, but, you know, th- we're going to have to kind of switch some things up because, and all you do is show him film, you know, because if you're just talking to him, he's, he's in his head, he's going to say, yo, man, I got four rings. What you talking about? That's what he does whenever they're losing. You know, they hey, they point to four, four rings. What you got? And that shit gets old. <laughs> it does get old. Like, yeah, but, yo, that was, you know, 15 years ago. It wasn't 15 years ago because they just won one. So, you know, you, you can still say that when you, if somebody's talking to you that that ain't done nothing, you'd be like, dog, you're talking to me like I'm a, a scrub. Fuck, I got four rings. You ain't been in the league long enough. You ain't been in the league four years. What you talking about? But when it comes to management and coaches, they can sit down and break down film and say, look, Clay, here's you right here. Here is here is you pre-injury coming off the screen, getting your shot, or getting to the basket. Here is you post-injury coming off the screen, getting your shot, trying to get to the basket. Here are things that you did well prior to your injury. Here are those same things that you're struggling with. Here are those things. Here's what you were defensively. Now, obviously, as you get older, you know, but it's that lateral push off, that explosiveness, that twitch muscle stuff. You lose something when you have a, 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 an injury, those type of injuries anyway. But then it's like you're showing him this stuff. I think maybe he can kind of understand like when he's seeing it, like, look, we're not just doing this to do it. Look, this is why we're doing it. I honestly think he would have to have a come to Jesus meeting with himself and just say, okay, yeah, I get it. But I don't know if they did that with him. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there obviously, but it's a sad situation because you really wanted to see them uh, in together. And somebody brought up something and said, could you imagine if when, when Draymond and KD had gotten into it, if they would have chose KD instead of Draymond, where they would be now? They probably would be five or six, maybe seven championships. Because when you look at it, you could get somebody in there to you could replace Draymond with with two players. In in a sense, somebody who's playing hard nosed D and somebody who's more facilitating. You 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 really could because those type of players are starting to be more prevalent now. What Draymond brings is is exceptional. So I'm not saying that you could get everything out of, like he's not replaceable, but they're more, I think, from what they were saying, and I agree, they were more, they were more dynamic with those three as scorers because it's hard to play against those, those guys and match up against them. But with Steph Clay and, and, and Draymond, the league caught up. The league caught up with how to defend them. And, you know, 
you don't have Boston collapsing and they don't win another championship. But they did it because Steph put everybody on their back and, and showed them who he was, which is what superstars do. So I'm so interested to see how this uh, season takes with the Mavericks. I don't think him going to the Mavs because that's another thing, and I'll probably have to talk about that next time with how how it fits. I'm not saying it doesn't fit, but it I don't I don't see it fitting the way uh, people want it to be a fit. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know what's gonna happen. There, there are some teams that are gonna have to make some decisions. So we will see. I'll try to ride, come back. But these were the two biggest things. I was like, man, for real, these are what's happening. So we'll see. All right, so let me go into my basketball ideology. I had some things that I were, was going to discuss. I did have an opportunity to uh, have some have a guest on uh, today, but with me having my growing pool and and having you know some things that happened within the last uh, twenty four hours, I was like, nah, you know what? I need to spend some time with this. All right, so what I have come to terms with is that I need as a trainer, as a scouting service, you know, someone who's getting kids looks, I need to do a better job with vetting coaches, college coaches, right? I can't do anything about the high school coaches because if they're, you know, they're terrible, they're terrible. We can work around it, but I need to do a better job of vetting and what I've never done is I've never inserted myself into, um, you know, any type of negotiations or discussions. All I've ever tried to do was give the kids the information that you want to look into and then let them make a decision. Because I always felt if I kind of put too much of my two cents in and they made a decision a little bit more based on me, if it didn't work out, they're looking looking at me crazy. So I never wanted to do it. I wanted to make it to where, well, if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. But let me say this. Sometimes things don't work out. It's not a good fit. You know, the coach, if the coach is good, they're expecting, you know, they're thinking you're going to be the type of player that they recruited. Maybe you don't come out and you're not doing it. What they were, they, you know, hey, look, I thought you were going to be shooting and, and, and stretching the floor with your, your shooting. Uh, you struggle from shooting. It's not helped us. It's not a good fit. I need somebody that can be reliable shooting. That's a game problem. That's an understandable thing where both parties can look at it and say, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry or whatever, or, and, and either move on or I'm going to move you to the bench till you can show me that you can knock down shots, right? But then there's that other stuff. So what are you talking about, Kay? You just, you rambling and you're not giving us any context. Okay, so I have, uh, I had a, a college coach reach out to me. I think it was Division three, on a player. Like, hey, you know, I wanted to see if I can contact this player. And, and when he said player's name, I'm looking at it. This is like, this is last night. And this happens because my I had, I had a, a relapse on my groin. So I was in pain and I had to get up and I you know, went to the restroom and stuff. And I used my phone because it's at night looking and I see this. So I look it up and I'm like looking at the message and I'm like, man, what is he talking about? She's playing. So then I message like what well, she's playing. But then as I message, I say, well, okay, well, let me, you know, figure out what's going on with her. Go to her page. Not much. Go to the college's page. Not much. Go to the college's website. Look at the stats, the player, you know, how many games and stuff. And I noticed that after December, there were no stats for us and wasn't on the roster. So I'm like, okay. So then I reached out to them, you know, and the player told me that, um, and and I'm not going to pull any punches when I say this, because this goes to the heart of what I'm going to do better. Player says, coach, you know, I was there and this coach was was very racist uh, towards Hispanics and, and you know, uh, Mexican speaking Spanish or just Mexican culture and stuff like that. Plus... I was always getting, you know, different different stuff as far as like, you know, game thing. Coaches and, and I've heard this kind of stuff before on the game angle. I get there, the coach wants me to do this. 
I do that, and then they say, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. I'll give you an example. I had a kid who went to a school. I'm not going to name the schools right now. I'm not going to name the schools. Goes to a school. Coach recruits her because uh, she was one of the top shooters in the state. Three-point percentage and stuff. Flat-out shoot. In the game, she gets the ball. Fast break. Ball's coming down. Comes from the from they dribbling down the left wing, uh, get to the top of the key. They swing it to the top, swing it to her as she's getting to the corner, wide open, catch, pull up three, knock down. That's what she does. She gets taken out. Later on, game almost the exact same thing, but I think instead of the corner, she's like around the the, the three. Gets that shot. It's a transition shot. That's what you, you you get, right? Wide open shot. She don't have to take a dribble. She don't have to pump fade one dribble, step back. But even if she did, if she if that's what she does, if that's why you recruited her, ain't that what you're doing? Nope. She knocks her down, takes her out. She's confused. She has a conversation with the coach. Coach tells her, well, we don't shoot the ball unless there's under 10 seconds left in the shot clock. <laughs> I didn't even really know what to do with that when that when when uh when my player told me that. Other than say, uh, are you kidding me? In a transition, look, transition or no transition, I get you have a system, you want to slow the ball down, ball movement, this and that. But any coach on any level, whether it's grade school, city league, travel, middle school, high school, college. Semi-pro, pro, any coach who who tells a player that's what they do, they shoot a high percentage, they make threes. When you get a wide open three through transition or maybe you got a point guard that, you know, took advantage of something, sucked the defense in, gets you the ball, and you tell that player that you don't want them taking, you want them to pass that shot up, Man, y'all should fucking not be, y'all shouldn't be anywhere near a basketball court. None of you. There's no reason to tell. Like, imagine telling Clay or or Steph. Yeah, now, uh, Steve Kerr saying, yeah, uh, uh, it was uh, 18 seconds left in the shot clock. Uh, in 24 seconds shot clock, 18 seconds left. You took this wide open three. We're going to, we're going to sit you. Could you imagine how long that coach would be coaching? Now, I can imagine that these coaches, if things start to come to light, those are that's that's going to happen. You're going to see some of these coaches not get coached. My problem is 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 a two point problem. And this is what I have to get better at. I am going to insert myself a little bit more when I'm talking to my players, when there are schools that reach out. If I'm involved now, if I have nothing to do with it, I don't have nothing to do with it unless they want me to step in. Right. But I'm going to ask because both of these situations have happened at a lot of schools with kids, kids that could play. It's happened. This other stuff about racist coaches. Yeah, that shit's been happening a lot. I'm not going to name schools, but I guarantee you I'm going to make sure I have a list when kids come and they're like, yeah, this this coach reached out. I'm going to say, no, nah, fuck them. That coach is racist. He don't like players, certain type of players. And look, I'm not even going to say that you can't be a racist coach. If you're a racist white coach, you're a racist black coach, you're a racist Hispanic coach, you're a racist Asian coach or or, or European coach or Russian coach, whatever it is. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. If if you only want players of your race playing, I, I really can't complain. That's who you're recruiting. But don't don't recruit a player from a ethnicity that you don't fuck with and you get the kid down there and then you subject that kid to all kind of bullshit. Now this kid is psychologically scarred because they haven't ever went through the kind of stuff that they're going through now. 
So if you're a white coach and you only recruit white players, fine. You better have a damn uh, national championship record where you win a high percentage of players uh, games. Because if you're if you're going eight and twenty two, which is what this school was, if you're going eight and twenty two for the season, maybe your shit is fucked up. Maybe it's your coaching style. Maybe it's the type of players you recruit. Maybe that's what's going on. So I'm going to do a better job market right now. Episode 72, the greatest episode ever made. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to mark it down. I'm going to talk to all of my current players that are in negotiations. Some of them have actually signed. I'm going to be reaching out to these school coaches. And I'm going to tell them. Because I don't have a problem telling them. Now, if the parents say, you know what, we'd rather you not. Okay, that's fine. I I, I won't. But I'm going to be asking these coaches, this coach who who wants wants her, I'm going to have a conversation with that coach. I'm not going to be rude or an ass. I'm going to be kind of forceful and, 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 you know, to the point. I'm also going to do my research. Look into that town. I mean, if a town is racist, you 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 tend to, shit shit is out there. <laughs> Social media, news articles, you know, you can find out stuff. It's not hard to do now. You can look at the roster. Look at the roster and see the type of players that that coach uh, has. If that coach doesn't have type of players that you know are conducive to to making it, um, you know, welcoming. I'm going to tell that player no. And I'm going to tell that coach, man, he or she, because I'm equal opportunity when it comes to this shit, whoever you are. Like, man, you, know, you yeah, you need to get on. And you better hope that at some time I just don't decide to just let the public know what type of person you're at. Now, if somebody say, hey, can you tell me privately? Yeah, I'll tell you privately. I don't have no problem with that. I haven't actually vetted. I haven't actually talked to him. But here's the thing. I've had a lot of kids in the in the years that I've been here that have had the same problems going to different schools. And that shit ain't right. If you if you it's not like you're recruiting kids in El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas. El Paso is called the Spanish for the past. You know that it borders New Mexico and Mexico. If you did a population search, you would see that 60 to 70 percent of the population here in the city of El Paso is Hispanic or Mexican. Right. So if you're recruiting a a kid whose last name is Gonzalez or Vasquez, and I'm not I'm not like disrespecting nobody's name. So don't don't. Don't, you know, don't don't get that out of that. Don't hear what I don't say. But if you're recruiting somebody with that last name and you look at them and you see that they they're not black or maybe they are, maybe they're mixed. There's a chance that this kid speaks Spanish or this kid is of Spanish descent. And if that's a problem for you, move the fuck on. Recruit somebody else. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if it was my child, and I'm, I'm and look, I'm, I, I, I say this not to say that those, that the parents of these kids didn't love their kids and didn't want to, to go out there and, and, and bash somebody's head in. That's not what I'm saying. Here's what I am saying. Yo, I come from a, I come from a place. Very violent place. I had to, you know, there are some things that, you know, I can't, I don't even know if statute of limitations is over with that. So I can't be talking about certain things because, you know, I might have somebody, yo, like, we got you on tape. We got you on tape uh, talking about this stuff and we, this has been in our cold case. So we're going to reopen it. We need to re-interview. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. All I have, all I'm saying is when it comes to my, my family, you know, my wife, my kids, my mom, my brothers and sisters, that kind of stuff. Yo, if that was one of my kids, I'm different. 
If that was one of my kids, I'm on my way up there. I'm probably going to go on the court and I'm probably going to snatch his ass, him or her, whoever, equal opportunity. I'm probably going to snatch the ass up in front of the, in front of the people. And I'm going to say, you know, man, who do you think you are to be chastising my kid that like that? When you talked to me and told me you wanted my child there, you needed my child for your program. You knew what my child was. A, you knew my child wasn't wasn't white or black. And this is how you act. Yeah. All right. I got bail money. <laughs> I got bail money. Yeah. And I got people who know people. So I, I ain't worried about that. Am I talking about committing uh, uh, assault? You're damn right. You're damn right. Because when it comes to your kids or just somebody you love, man, nah, nah. I'm, I'm a little hot because I didn't know about it and I've seen a pattern in me, I kind of equate it to being it's something that I did or something that I'm not doing. So I'm looking back on it and saying, this is what I'm going to change. And I'm going to be having conversations with these coaches. And I'm going to say, look, if you're A, B and C, we don't even need to continue this conversation. But I'm telling you right now, if you recruit this kid. If you if you're dishonest where you you want her to shoot, she comes up there. Now you're telling you want her to drive Well, she's not a driver and stuff. And you sit. I can rock with that. You just don't know how to coach. But don't let that parent or that kid come back and tell me that that you were making fun of them because of their uh, ethnicity or you shut them out. Because one thing that's supposed to be sacred is when you're on a team. You shouldn't have to hear shit from your teammates and your coaches. You can hear shit from other people on the outside. If you playing in a racist uh, 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 city or something, you're going to hear that on the outside. But you shouldn't be hearing it from the inside. You tell Western, Western, West, Te- West Texas, the UTEP Miners in 66, they endured that. The movie Glory Road. And look, I know... Some of the players. I've talked to Mr. Cager from the past. There was stuff that didn't come out in that movie that was really bad. But they stuck together and they they formed a, a relationship as players and with their coach. If I don't have that, why am I even on this team? If I don't have my players to have my back if somebody's making a racist joke about me or if my coach is kind of laughing along and not getting my back, why am I there? Because I see this is this is what, what y'all about. If that's what y'all about, I'm cool. Look, I'll say it again. I'd rather somebody tell me that they racist to my face and that they don't like black people. I'd actually respect them because I know I don't have to fuck with you. I'd actually respect you. I'd rather have that than the person that laughs and, and, and lies and, and connives in my face. But behind doors, they're, they're calling me all this and they're acting all of that. See, here's the greatest thing about me. Well, not the greatest, but here's here's something that I love. I own my own fucking business. I employ people. I don't talk about it a lot. I mean, it's not like I do it for that. But when I sit back and and understand stuff, I own my own thing. I don't answer to nobody. But it's important for me to make sure that I make an example, a great example for the kids that I train. Three of these kids that I trained, three three kids that are, are, are trainers are kids that I trained. I trained and they came back and they working for me. Any kid that comes to me that needs something, if I can help you out, I'm going to help you out. That's the type of person I am. I don't try to be something just because I own my own business. I say I own my own business because I can sit up here and talk about this. Who you going to fucking complain to? Oh, well, hey, the, 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 the person on the podcast, we're going to have to we're going to have to. Uh, call uh, the uh, the person who, the, who who owns the business or something who's over the podcast because I didn't like what he said. Okay, fill out a complaint, send it in, <laughs> see what happens. Yeah, I don't ride like that. You don't do kids like that. You should not. You guys and girls, I'm equal opportunity. Y'all shouldn't be in positions of power. Obviously, I know that you know. With jobs and stuff like that, there are people who do a lot of, you know, bad things. But you person coming to apply for a job, you kind of don't have a say so. 
they just come in and apply. You can accept them or not accept them. You can accept them and then make their life uncomfortable and then they leave. But you guys are recruiting these kids. You're recruiting them. You're telling them that you like what they do and you want them to come play for you. And then you're doing this. This has happened a lot, y'all. And I'm going to take steps to make sure that uh, I vet these coaches. So when I call the coach, I'm going to ask them like, yo, like, so what's your program about? Oh, well, you know, we don't. No, 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 no. I don't need to hear all that. Look, coach, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to be a little bit, a little bit aggressive with my conversation with you. So I don't want you to take it the wrong way, but I've had kids go through all of this bullshit and I'm trying to cut all of this, you know, do you have black players? What do you have, what what type of your roster? What is it comprised of? What's the town like? You know, those kind of things. We can get to all the other stuff later, but I need to know if 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 she comes up there and she has an issue where the players, the community, or or one of your coaches, or hell, even you on the on, on the staff, somebody is is hazing or, or treating her less than a person because of where she, you know, where she is. I need to know that, man. So I don't, I don't, we can end that conversation here. Cause the last thing you need is me to be making the news. You don't want Keenan to be making the news. I'm telling you right now, you know, yo, K made the news, man. K went up there and yeah, nah, it wasn't pretty. We already got his GoFundMe ready. You know, he said he got some stuff. On the on the back end, he ready. I'm not having it, so I'm gonna make sure that I save. I'm gonna make sure that I save you guys a, a lot of trouble and anguish because that that that's not happening. I mean, I, I this is more of a rant, and and I'm 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 hurt by it because it's it's un it, it's unnecessary. Like, why are you going to recruit somebody that you have no intention of getting along with? You don't even like them. What kind of person wants somebody around that you don't like? That that doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess it does in some instances because corporations and, and organizations do it all the time. They, they put you in lower level. They make you work for them, but they don't like you. They don't have to have you in the houses and stuff. But, you know, nah, nah, I don't rock like that. So uh, I'm on my soapbox. Uh, and I'm not just going to, I'm probably going to have to post a little of this segment. Uh, I might even have to do a video of this segment and, and post it on my other social media. This is going to be a warning. I'm letting all, all y'all college coaches out there, you know, lower level, high level. It's weird. You don't see it as, I don't hear about it as much on the higher level with some of this stuff. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. You just don't hear about it as much. On these lower level schools, I don't know what they're doing with, with their recruiting, how they're recruiting these people and how they're vetting them, but it is very, 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 very out there. It's happening. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, I still want everybody to have a good day, you know, except for them racist people that are out there. You know, I, ho I hope you walk into a tree or something and hit your head and and realize that, man, why have I been racist? I've been wrong. <laughs> All right. So, look, I'm going to get out of here. I got to go make some calls. I got to uh, ask some stuff because, you know, uh, like 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 Tombstone, you tell him you tell him I'm coming and hell is coming with me. <laughs> I love that scene. But I got goosebumps when I saw that movie. Well, I'm going to end it like I always do. But before, just make sure, look, like, subscribe, follow, comment. Let me know what y'all think. If you think I'm out of line, shoot me. Shoot me, a, shoot me a comment. Reach out to me. Explain to me why you think I'm out of line. Maybe I articulated something that came out in a way that you weren't able to really understand. Maybe I need to, to, to you know, uh what is it? What's the word I'm trying to say? I need to expand on it so you understand what I'm saying, because I, this is just me talking and this is stuff coming into my head. I got not notes in the script. I got, you know, stuff that I say, OK, this is what I'm talking about. and I'm going here. But sometimes when you have a dialogue, you can have a dialogue with somebody and you can kind of go back and forth. So maybe something I said, maybe it's 
you know, misinterpreted or something. I don't think I misinterpreted anything with what I said, but who knows? Maybe I did. Because ultimately, this is the greatest episode in the history of podcasts, right? So episode 72. I hate to I hate to leave 72 and go on to 73. But episode 72, I'm going to end it like I always do. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. I'm out. Street cred sports, say it with your chest. Yeah, yeah. Go get it from the nest. Street cred sports, okay, that's a bet. <laughs>